Welcome back for another episode of the Swaycast. We have a special guest, Wabanzi Community College assistant soccer coach, Alvaro Perez. How are you doing, brother? Thank you for doing this. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. I'm honored. Um, doing good, man. Doing good. Today's a beautiful day. Yes. Finally, we're getting some good, good weather. But uh, yes. man, other than that, I'm doing good, man. I'm, I was excited for this opportunity. You know, you told me you wanted me on here, and I'm like, you know, I've never done this before, but you know, I would be pretty. I mean, I was honored that Thank you you you, you thought of me. You know, I appreciate you for your time. Um, I've known you for many years. I've played soccer with you since we were what seven, eight. Yeah, man. It had, it had to be sometime going into fifth, sixth grade. Um, mm-hmm. So we've been knowing each other for a while, and then we went to high school together. We played high school on ball. Yeah. Um, and you haven't aged. You haven't either. <laughs> you haven't either. We look good. Yeah. You may have gained a couple pounds, but it's nothing yeah. we can't shed with a jogger run. <laughs> it's all muscle. <laughs> yes, sir. So you were born in uh, Queens, New York. Yeah, that's right. Um, so yeah, I'm from New York. <laughs> yeah. Tell me a little bit about. So yeah, yeah. Like I actually like to uh, always when somebody asks me about the New York part of my life, I always like to uh, show off that uh, me and Spider Man were neighbors. <laughs> because if you notice, like a lot of his movies, only I feel like if you're from there, you'll know. But in in all the Spider Mans, there's always a scene in uh, Sunnyside. Mm-hmm. That's where I was from. Sunnyside, Queens, and uh, like even in the latest movie. There's like a bakery or a corner store that he's in that's down the street from my grandma's house. And when you see these uh, scenes, oh, do you remember them? Does it put you in a place where it's like, oh, I've been there. I've done that, this and the other. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that, that gives me a lot of uh, childhood memories pretty much because uh, the scene where I was telling you about, it's, it's right across the street from a train station. Okay. I would, I would get on that train pretty, pretty often, like the 7 train. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, New York had a, diff- a big impact um, in my life. I see you represent it a lot. I yeah, yeah, yeah. You are uh, very uh, Queens, New York, uh, worthy of mentioning it. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm proud. Like, look, look yeah. key, I'm a little, like to show off, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> How's uh, the pizza there compared to uh, here in Chicago? Man, Be you know. Careful. Yeah. <laughs> You know, over here, you know, I tell my wife a lot, like I judge people here, you know, like, like if they dip their ranch or pizza in their in ranch, you know, I don't, not a fan of that, you know, but, but, but the pizza, the game over there, man, is, is a whole nother level. Like it's competition everywhere, right? So they take me. It's better? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, um, when I went, uh, what was it? Yeah. One of the last times I went, mm-hmm. I waited six hours for, to get some pizza and it was worth it. And yeah. it was worth it. Yeah, that's how that's how good they are over there. What what did you do in those so hours? So this place had like some weird hours. I think they opened at five or six. In the morning? Uh PM. Oh, okay. Uh and they closed like at ten or something. So they're only open like a couple hours. So the way it worked is um you have to go in person to put your name on the on the list. <laughs> and uh, I got there like well, we got there like at four or something. And uh, we waited about 45 minutes in line, and uh, then they started getting uh, the names. And it got to a point where when we got there, we were at the, like, the 9, 10 o'clock slot. So we barely made it. And so then we left, and I forgot what we did. We just chilled somewhere, and then uh, we came back, and we ate, and it was, it was worth, worth it. it. Oh, yeah, it was worth it. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. That's great. Uh, you're also Colombian. Yeah, half Colombian, yeah, half Colombian. So you technically uh, had options. You could have played for Colombia's <laughs> international team, Mexico's international team, United States international team. Tell me a little bit about Colombia and your roots. Yeah, so, yeah, my mom is 100% Colombian. Uh, have you been? Yeah, yeah. So the first time I've been there, from what I remember, I was like uh, like six, seven. Uh, my mom's from Bogota, the, the uh, capital. Yeah. Uh, beautiful yeah yeah there, there's more beautiful places than, than that but I mean it's it's, a, it's got its things it's like surrounded by mountains pretty okay. much so you're not gonna get no beach or anything in there, okay. you know that's what I feel like people uh, 
think of Colombia? You know, like hot, nice weather and, and, the, and the beach or something, you know? I think of Pablo Escobar. Oh. <laughs> but I also think about um, the, the 1994 team. Oh. Very, very good international team. Uh, what's the... They were supposed to win it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they didn't make it through the group stage, no. which we'll get to later on mm-hmm. with uh, the World Cup 2022. We'll pick our uh, group stage advancers, which will be fun. Um, as yeah. we're talking about soccer, when did you first fall in love with the sport? So when I lived in New York, um, soccer did not exist for no. me. No, I, I had no idea what soccer was or anything like that. Really? Yeah. The, the only thing that was in, in my, like in my, I guess what I would see or notice is the Yankees baseball. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I loved baseball back in the day. They I would play the town, huh? Yeah. There was this park across the street from uh, my grandma's house. Well, my elementary school. Mm-hmm. Uh, big playground. It was like big, big one. So uh, they would have like baseball games, like the locals, you know, stu- students or young young people. And I would uh, I would jump in those games, and it was fun. It was fun. Like uh, I remember those Did days. Did you really want to play? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I I mean, I was not in a team or anything, mm-hmm. but so I would were- go every day and play. Mm-hmm. So. Um, yeah, and then like um, then when we moved here to Illinois, um, I was like six, six or seven, around there. I know it was like third grade, and uh, I met uh, well my brother. He was in middle school in Jewel. He, uh, I guess he met uh, a friend, mm-hmm. and um, they became good friends. So then he decided to join the soccer team. And um, your brother was a pretty good player himself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So had he played in uh, Queens? No, no. So yeah, before before we wow. moved, I think we we had no idea about it's soccer. Impressive how uh, quickly you were able to get the, the understanding of the game, especially you, because not to toot your horn, but you play with an IQ. You know, you don't only play with a gift or a talent, or but you also play with your brain uh, mm-hmm. at least. You've been a teammate of mine for many, many years, and uh, it's it's impressive Appreciate how quickly <laughs> you got some skills in you, <laughs> given that you didn't start playing that until you were seven, eight. Yeah, Se- seven. I want to say seven. Wow. But yet, um, but yeah, the way it started is that yeah, my my brother uh, became good friends with this guy, and um, and then I, I you know, I kind of was like obsessed, not, not obsessed, but. I was really into what my brother would do. He's four years older than me, so you know uh, he would play here at Jewel. Even on on days off, he mm-hmm. would come and play with them. So I'd always want to jump in. He'd get annoyed when I would come with him, but I'd always jump in. And he started playing soccer. So I was like, All right, I want to play soccer too. Then, so then, uh, yeah, that's how it started. And you know, I I didn't uh, play no clubs here or anything. It was just all local. It started pretty much with with his friends. Okay, it was only like that. The only time I played is with the, with his friend. That's new to me. Yeah. So I thought you had been playing since you were able to talk, walk, I don't know, yeah. <laughs> kick the ball around, at least know of yeah. this sport. It's dope. Yeah. It's dope. You picked it up real quick. Yeah. I, I mean, that's the thing that, you know, I when it comes to coaching, that's what I think of a lot. But, I mean, I'll, I'll go into that later. But, yeah, that's how it started. And, and uh you know, I I guess I, I just fell in love with it. I know that seeing my brother play with his friends, it was even though he didn't want me to play with him because <laughs> they were a little older. But I think if it weren't for, for those guys, uh, I wouldn't be where I'm at today, you know, playing soccer. Yeah. yeah. And now coaching. Yeah. yeah. Give me a – this is a little complicated, but if you have them, give them to me. Uh, top five favorite players. Uh, past, present. Um, so my, my, okay. My all time is definitely Niesta. Ooh, okay. I have okay. There's uh beautiful jersey, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, but my first favorite player, uh, was David Beckham. Uh, he had a big impact in my life growing up, like in my, in my young days. Yeah. I think I was obsessed with his haircuts. <laughs> You know, like a lot of people don't know this about me, but when he was a uh, Galactico, mm-hmm. I was a Madrid fan. Mm-hmm. I was a Real Madrid fan, but mainly because of him. 
I like his style. His shoes are, are really good. His haircuts. He um, was like one of the first uh, soccer players to have his own shoe line, no? Like his own logo on a shoe? Yeah. Kind of, kind of like a like a Kobe Bryant, LeBron James. Maybe, I, I'm maybe I'm sure. wrong. Yeah, I'm not too sure. Because maybe Pele had some, but I'm not too yeah. sure. But I know what you're mean. Yeah. And issues is really well, man. Yeah. <laughs> I was one of those guys. <laughs> you won more than a pair, I remember. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's why I, I love Adidas. And mainly because of him. I must admit, I was a Nike guy until um, seeing how much you liked Adidas. Then I tried uh, Adidas Adi Pierce. And I felt like I had put on clouds for cleats. And from there on, I, I never went back. Oh, I, I, I lied. <laughs> I, I did get a pair of Pumas. But actually, those Pumas may have been four. It was the Samuel Atto ones. Mm-hmm. They're pretty comfy, too. But there's nothing, nothing oh, like I Adidas cleats. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, the way I see what Adidas is, that brand is soccer. Mm-hmm. Like always been soccer, you know, like they ones that pretty much were in the game first. And there's like, I always see them as a soccer uh, comes first for them uh, more than anything else. And then Nike, I mean, Nike is good. I wear Nikes all the time, but I always see Nike as like a, a newer brand that, you know, uh, I guess they're, they didn't start off with soccer, mm-hmm. but, but Adidas has always been good because of David Beckham. I, th- I think they started as uh, track shoes. Yeah, I, uh, yeah I think you're right. Mm-hmm. So we've got what? David Beckham. Oh, uh, Iniesta. Yeah. Yeah, Iniesta, man, that guy has had a big impact. So you were saying about the IQ. I was obsessed with like one thing that really like helped me out in my career is like, I feel like a lot of people don't do this nowadays, but like you'll sit, I'll sit down mm-hmm. and watch the game, mm-hmm. but like I'll keep my eyes on him. Mm, okay. Like, even if he doesn't have the ball, just to see yeah, yeah. his movement and like where he's putting himself in, in position. Yeah. And that, that, that is like a big thing with me in coaching. Cause I'm like, if I saw, like I asked myself every time, why is Iniesta doing this? Why is he doing mm-hmm. that? And what does he see? Like, Things like that, you know. Obviously, I'm not at his level, but you know, I always try to tell people like, if if you wanna, if you like a player, yeah, like I like a lot of players, but there's certain players that I feel like I can maybe mimic. Like mm-hmm. I, keep, I feel like, like obviously not Ronaldo, you know, mm-hmm. but but Iniesta to me is somebody that you know, it wasn't that athletic, wasn't that fast, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, that's something like me, and so I feel like you know, seeing that guy, he made huge impact in my. My, my career and then his shoes the CTRs I was a fan of those <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Iniesta like Xavi are like one in a generation players like uh, like Cristiano Ronaldo is like mm-hmm. Lionel Messi is it's just in a, in a a different way like they may not do it in a, in assist and goals but they do it in a way where like you don't have as many assists or goals throughout a season if it isn't for the things that they do mm-hmm. without the ball with the ball uh, it's it's impressive how how there are players like that out there like another player who reminds me of that Sinidin Sinan who I think is like one of the all time best midfielders because of just his IQ and then he also had that that gift that talent that touch mm-hmm. touch was impeccable yeah um, there's a there's so many players though like the list goes on and on Ronaldinho uh, for for his Joga Bonito style of play, totally different than than everyone else, or anyone else we had seen. Um, how like how do you transition from like from like player to coach? Is there a transition or is it like like because like we're talking about like we kind of went to like midfielders, right? Mm-hmm. We both play midfield, so maybe that's why we're biased and we pick like yeah. favorite players to be midfield players but um also most head coaches are midfield players at, at least good good coaches mm-hmm. and i may be wrong but um ones that i can think of top of my head those are some impressive guys um i i feel like for them it's easier to transition because of their iq 
um, you mentioned it a little bit how when you um, used to learn from players, you'd like look at what they were doing without or with the ball. Mm-hmm. Um, now, obviously, you're doing it in a in a broader span because now you've got like ten players who you're looking at, you know. And then, how how do you go from player to coach? Yeah, that's something I still ask myself to today because, you know, I'm still a young coach, but um, I know that my playing experience has a lot to, like, do with how I'm transitioning Mm -hmm. from that because, like, of all the experiences I've had, like, you know, what works well in the locker room, what works well in, you know, all kinds of situations, right? And um, one thing that, that helps me out a lot is, like, from my experiences, like, I try to tell all my, my players, like, you know, size, athleticism, all that doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. It's just what, what you have up here, right? Um, like, when I played, I, you know, I've seen my young days, you don't think of these things. You always think, like, oh, you're you're good, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't think of all these little things. So, I think that throughout time, one of the things that I've noticed is there's a lot of little things in soccer that helps you improve and helps you win games. Mm-hmm. And, like... Like I, me as a player, and like I look at it with Iniesta, like he won, he wins, he wins games, but he's not scoring 20, yeah. 30 goals a season. Yeah. Exactly. There's little things that uh, every player can do for their team to win, and and I think that that's what I try to tell my players a lot because you know, as a player, yeah, you're able to have control of that, but mm-hmm. as a coach, like I try to educate them, like hey. I mean, I really don't tell them, like, this is what I would do. Mm-hmm. Like, I wouldn't say those words. Right, right. But I would try to, like, show them, like, if you do this, it would work, but. The outcome will be different. Yeah. Um, and then, and then like, the, I mean, one of the worst, the, 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 I guess, like, the hard feelings you go through as a coach, uh, one of the worst feelings is, like, you know, you want to get in there and play, you know. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, I yeah. bet. But, but it's exciting. I mean, uh, I think that. It feels kind of just like as a player, even though you're on the sideline, like they're playing the way you would want to play, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so I think that, you know, I'm kind of grateful for the experiences I've had. You know, I know I haven't had like a professional, like there's guys that have a lot better resumes Mm -hmm. than I do, but, uh, but from what I've been through, I mean, I've been proud of what I've been through and you, you've been doing club travel recently, uh, became the assistant coach for Wabanzi community college. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, actually, today you have a a game, uh, yeah, with the uh, kickers, yeah. yeah so, club, which is a very popular soccer club here in uh, the Chicagoland area, and has been for a long, long time. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah that I do have a game later on. Man. Yeah, <laughs> it's with the uh, I coach high school guys. Um, but uh, you is know. there a difference in like? Obviously, there is. But what is like? huge differences that stick out between like coaching club travel uh, college oh, high yeah. school athletes. so so you know with kickers um because I, I i coached before kickers mm-hmm. kickers is pretty new to me mm-hmm. but before kickers i was at clips inferno and those are like really competitive um and then we'll, clips and inferno yeah, and I remember playing them when we were playing club travel ball. So, you know, the thing that I always say that I, I don't technically consider what I did play club. But that's because it was like a a group of kids from the area. Mm-hmm. There wasn't like an like a like a U eleven, U twelve. It was just literally that yeah. that U that U seven <laughs> became U eight. The U eight became U nine. U nine became U ten. We literally grew up playing through the ranks, yeah. and there was no A and B team. No. It was just one group yeah. of kids that grew up yeah. together. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I I don't really consider it as a club because, like a lot, of, I tell a lot of people, like I've never been to a college showcase as a player. I've mm-hmm. never. I didn't even know what that was until like I got like a little older mm-hmm. in my career. But um yeah, like, you know, that's the thing that, you know, as a club, that those are the big games. Those mm-hmm. college showcase stuff. Do you feel like that's something that 
you didn't know then, but now that you know, you can help the next generation, the kids that you're coaching to have an opportunity that you may have not had. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I feel like, like I learned a lot in my younger days coaching because mm-hmm. those, those clubs, like they're big on that stuff. And uh, I feel like from what I've seen, those, how important those games are. Yeah. And how developing, like, because people, you know, there's some parents that really invest in their yeah. kids. And, like, they, they, they're they like, you have a game in, you know, in another state? Okay. I'll, I'll try to find a way to be there. Yeah. Like, there's some parents that really take that seriously. And, you know, I respect that. I feel like those are those kids that, that really succeed. Because, like, like my parents, like, I'm not saying, like, they're, they're bad parents. But when it came to Same. soccer, Same. um, they weren't that knowledgeable, right? Yeah. Like, they didn't know about clubs here. I don't think my parents ever went to a, a, a varsity soccer game of mine. Oh. Well, they, like, yeah, like, things like that. Like, I didn't have, um, like, my dad or anything. Like, he wouldn't be like, okay, sign up for this club. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, you know, I didn't have no problem with that. But I feel like if a parent uh, is so so important in someone's career right. at a young age. Right. That, you know, that has a big impact in their career later on. You got Serena and... Uh, Venus. Oh, yeah, yeah. Williams. Why does it sound wrong? But yeah, like yeah, like Tiger Woods. Yeah, like that. That was really maybe they were a little over the top. But what's funny is and you remember my dad was very aggressive with me, like when we were playing the club travel ball, or, mm-hmm. um, and that, and I felt like it helped me. But there was obviously that age where you're like. F you, F you. Like, <laughs> I, I don't want you to keep yelling at me. And they got to that point and he just was like, all right. And I actually think I told him like, quit coming to my games, like quit coming to my games. <laughs> and then he quit coming to my games. And uh, <laughs> like, kind of feel like I needed that. Um, it was like, I, I didn't have an assist or I'd have a goal. Mm-hmm. And he wouldn't tell me good job. He'd tell me you could have had three assists if you would have done this and this. You could have had three goals if you would have done this and this. And like to me, it was always like, "F you, like F you, like what?" Mm-hmm. But it's like those are the parents. Those are the parents that maybe as a coach you should um, look out for. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And as a player, mm-hmm. um, for my experience, like like that sense of. They, they want the best for you, but there are parents who are over the board. There are parents who are over the board. I'm sure if you, I'm not sure if you have experienced that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, no, there's always going to be those mm-hmm. parents who are like, why isn't my kid playing? Yeah. And, you know, and you know, that happened to me once. Uh, and like, it just breaks your heart, you know? Yeah. Like, you know, and, and people don't understand that like there's certain levels. Yeah. And you know, you want to put them at the right level. Because uh, as a young age, you know, if you're having issues like like if your parents are yelling at you or, or uh, you know, you don't get enough playing time. Mm-hmm. As a young player, that has a huge yeah. impact. Because I've seen some kids that, like, it's been a few. I've seen that they're not, they don't get enough playing time at a young age. So they just retire from, from soccer. From playing, yeah. Because yeah, I remember there was a kid where he was pretty, he was, oh, he was a good player, but his teammates were better. Yeah. And uh, this was at uh, at uh, Inferno, and uh, but then he was like, one day he's like, because I saw his dad, he's like, one day he's like, yeah, he doesn't, he says he doesn't like soccer anymore, he likes uh, American football now. Yeah. So I never saw him ever since then because yeah. he wasn't getting enough playing time, and at a young age, you know, you're not, I guess you don't know how to handle yeah. that type of stuff. Yeah. So that's one thing that I I try to keep in mind because I don't want to. I feel like my actions as a coach, like little things like playing time or something, yeah. has a huge impact yeah. in this kid's life. Yeah. Right? Like I don't want the worst thing I wanted him to play soccer, stop playing soccer forever. Right. So that's one thing that I, I I keep in mind of. Like I try to be fair with everybody, but you got to like prove to me that you deserve to right. be on the pitch. Right. But, but yeah, that, that's something that as a coach is tough to deal with. And that that literally led into my question, like, what's uh, a challenge you've experienced in uh, your young coaching career? Um, That's, that's great. That's great. I hope the best for it. And I know 
um, there's other levels that you're going to reach because of your devotion and love uh, for the game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, well, that was one of them. I think that's one of the biggest ones. Uh, I know that in Eclipse, they would compete in big tournaments. I think, like, since I had so much passion, I would treat them, like, as professionals. So let's say, like, we're going to the World Cup, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, those teams are practicing two months before or a month yeah. before. And they take their exhibition games and stuff like that. So when we go towards a, a tournament, in my brain, in my head, I'm like, man, I got to put these dudes to be able to run 10 miles. <laughs> and they got to be in peak form. Because that's pretty much club soccer. Like you, they, yeah, there's scrimmages, but those aren't the important ones. Mm-hmm. The important ones are the tournaments. So you want to get them ready. Like that's a challenge mm-hmm. because you don't want to, you want to win. Mm-hmm. When you're at a certain team, it's like, like Barcelona, like, What's their goals? It's to yeah. win everything. Yeah. They're not looking to come in the top five of La yeah. Liga. So that that's yeah, exactly. La Liga. And that that's a that's a challenge. Mm-hmm. Uh, now with kickers, I think that because um, it's a it's a big difference in level there. Uh, my my biggest challenge is it's something that I really want to be really good at when I get older, but I'm still working on. It's like being able to develop a player. So that they can be like the best they can, because like I'm do I have two teams. I have mm-hmm. a U8 and a U17. Oh damn, that's two totally different yeah. age groups. Yeah. So interesting. So I want the U17s to be in varsity mm-hmm. and get playing time. Mm-hmm. That's a big goal of mine. Um, so I need to find a way for me to push them, motivate them to be as best as they can. Because some some of them like they go to West. Like, you know, West isn't like the best team, mm-hmm. but it's a very good team mm-hmm. in the in the state. Year in and year out, they yeah. definitely put a team together to compete. Yeah. So, like, to get playing time, it's it's not the easiest mm-hmm. thing. But you know, I I that's a challenge that I have for them is that I want them to play varsity, um, and then for the the little guys, my goal is two years from now. I want to be competing in the best tournaments possible and winning them. Like I, I barely, I barely joined them like maybe like two, three months ago. And, um, you know, like inheriting, inheriting, getting a a team that, you know, prior coach had and didn't do that good of a job with to get that. It's like Manchester United, right? Mm -hmm. They're not doing so good. No, no coach wants to take care of that team. Right. (laughs) So like to be able to like, just change the whole mindset of that team, the little kids especially, they were really young, but my goal is in two years that we're competing in some big tournaments. Well, the way you've got your head on your shoulders and the way you're talking, you're definitely on your way there. It won't be easy, but that, that's something that motivates me. You know, that, that's a goal of mine. Tell me a little bit about uh, your investment in a uh, little company you got going on. Yeah, man. So, so yeah, this about a year ago, um, uh, we we decided to uh, start up a, a ice cream business. Mm-hmm. We were um, so me and my buddies, uh, or my best friends, my BFFs. <laughs> we were uh, we've been in this uh, ice cream industry for for a couple of years now, mm-hmm. several years now, and um, and we we felt like like we wanted to do something new, mm-hmm. like something that. There's not a lot of, right? I, th- I think everybody would ever think that at some point in their life, right? Right. Like you with the podcast, you want to you right. start something. So I, I, young, every young person, you know, you want to start something, right? Yeah. I think we, we, we decided that, you know, we wanted to, to do like a uh, uh, ice cream, uh, make our own ice cream with uh, some Delta 8 CBD. In there, Infused. Right? Infused ice cream. Uh, anything with, with, you know, with some sort of like... Uh, marijuana or anything right mm-hmm. so we know that in in uh it's very popular you know yeah. uh, i think that that the marijuana in general is uh is good you know like I, I see what it's for you know it's good for for a lot of things but but we felt like ice cream mm-hmm. who doesn't like 
Who doesn't that? like ice cream? Right? And we, we have the best product. We believe we have the best product. I've so, tried the product myself, and I think it is delicious. On top of it being delicious, it's just – it it sells itself. Yeah, I appreciate it. Man. I appreciate it. And, and that's what we want, right? Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, so so a year ago, we, we were like, you know, why not? We, we have a good product. Uh, we have an idea of how all this stuff works. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, we, we started it and we, we have a sales team mm-hmm. and we have a production team. And I think our sales team did a great job with, you know, going around local stores. We have five stores at the moment here in Illinois. Okay. Um, five smoke shops. There are five of them and uh, they're doing pretty well. So... You know, as the years have gone, we, we actually recently moved into a bigger facility uh, for production and distribution. That's and, exciting. Uh, <clears throat> so, and then the other big, big news is that we recently went to uh, California. We have... Uh, you found your way to California. Yeah. We have five That's big... Exciting. Yeah. Oh. So that is growing. Yeah. By the minute. Yeah. Second. Yeah. Hopefully, it's, yeah, it's growing right now. <laughs> and uh is is it um up for sale now in california yeah yeah so we have five stores and we're wow. we're, we're growing i think it's in cali is popular man wow yeah yeah, yeah so very in california people you know <laughs> <laughs> uh, but what flavors do you have do you so have different types of flavors or is it just uh yeah so two strands so we, we, at the moment, we're, we're, you know, we're always transitioning, thinking of new things. And we, we, uh, at the moment we have three flavors okay. um, that you can get year round. Okay. Um, which are the strawberry cheesecake cookies M cream. Mm. We got a little flavor in cookies there. Cookies M cream. Yeah. Uh, tell me the name of the product. Uh, the product, the, uh, company. M cream. M cream. Yeah. Yeah. M cream. So edibles, yeah. Dope name for that flavor there. Hey, right? It's yeah, you like that. And then Hope's Lime Pie. Uh, that's that, Those three flavors are year-round. Okay. Those you'll see. But the, the things that we, we like is uh, the seasonal flavors. Okay. We'll have, like, I can't go into specifics there, you know. Those suffice. have to wait until those come out. Yeah, exactly. Well, we, we will do, like, brownie. Uh, huh? We'll go a little, like, butter pecan or something, you know. Things like that. I can't go into too much detail, okay. but uh, you know, apple pie or something like that, right? Yeah, that, like, I'll have to try all of them. Yeah, right. <laughs> maybe uh, have me be a uh, a test dummy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um, yeah, yeah, we have that, and and yeah, we're we're planning on trying to expand. Um, I don't know if I can say my my lawyers might get mad, but <laughs> <laughs> but then we'll keep it. Yeah. We'll keep it. Uh, off the record. Um, yeah. So basically, my next question was, uh, what project does the company have in the works? You're telling me you're expanding. Um, you've got product out in California now. Um, and you recently uh, expanded the size of um, your warehouse. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we, we expanded. We're, it's, it's pretty new. So we're, we're, you know, adding things there. But. You know, we're going to have like our sales team, like things like that. Right. And then social media, that's mm-hmm. going to be big for us too. Yeah. We're, we're trying to, uh, it'll reach many, many people. Exactly. Um, maybe sometime we can have, um, Martin and we can have a conversation. Yeah. 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 The, 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 he's the BFF. Yeah. Well, it's a, several of them. Yeah. Yeah. But, but he, he's, uh, he's, he's good with that stuff. You yeah. Know? Like he, that's, that's his thing. And, but yeah, well, maybe one day, and then, but, but when it comes to to M cream, I mean, we all have a little uh, say in everything, you know. It's and, dope. Uh, it's dope. Yeah, but it's exciting news. Definitely but, keep me up to date. Um, yeah. Oh, follow us on on uh, M cream edibles. M cream edibles uh, on Instagram because uh, M cream edibles. Check yeah. them out. Product is delicious. Oh, and then I forgot one more, one more. Mcreamedibles.com too. Mcreamedibles.com. Yeah. Mcreamedibles.com. Yeah. All right. We're coming down to the wind of things. 
quick hitter questions. Give me your favorite home cooked meal. So I recently moved out, but before I moved out, um, my mom would make this like Colombian plate. It was like rice with like like chicken and some some caldito or something mm. with papa and, and carrot in there. Damn, uh, my mouth's watering. <laughs> <laughs> Give me your top three movies. So I want to say Star Wars. Love okay, Star Wars. Okay. But, the, but like, I want to get specific there because I really was not the biggest fan of the last mm-hmm. three, especially episode eight. Oh, man. My wife knows she is. I was pissed. Like, that was. Yeah. You know, those, those movies have so much, like, impact in people's lives. I was one of those. So it feels like they ruined my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> So, like, because Star Wars has a huge fan base, you know. Yeah. But that one's that one would be one, because um, I grew up on the episodes uh, one, two, and three. Mm-hmm. The like, you know how they say the one, generation. One, two, and three, or four, five, six. No, no. So, so one, two, and three. Okay. Because that's when I was like, that's when I was able to see them through the movies. That's yeah. like my generation, right? Right. Because that's how they say they say like. There's a generation of four, five, six, mm-hmm. and there's another generation of one, two, three. Yeah. And then a new generation, which is a seven, eight, nine. Yep. My generation was a one, two, three. Okay. So, like, I love Obi Wan. Well, my generation was one, two, three as well. But uh, my older brother, diehard fan. So I watched four, five, six before I watched one, two, three. Um, but Star Wars overall, yeah, it's, it's dope. Yeah. Except. <laughs> I have to agree. I am saddened by their newer stuff because it's not George Lucas anymore. Mm-hmm. It's Disney. Yeah. But, but yeah, that's one. Um, the one that I really, that I really, really liked was uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1. Man, like, I, I love the – because I, I really am a big fan of, like, classic rock. Mm-hmm. I love classic rock and, and – Having like a, a big movie like that with classic rock, because he, together. yeah, I was in love. Like <laughs> it was so cool him playing it through his little uh, Sony Walkman, I think that's what they call it. And uh, yeah, it was just so awesome. Like I was in love with it. Like I I downloaded the whole um, like the all the songs mm-hmm. right after the movies. <laughs> but um, <laughs> the playlist or the yeah the playlist yeah yeah I was in like it was awesome man like I was it was. It was it was a great movie because it was like intense, mm-hmm. but then the music is like oh okay yeah you know, but yeah that would be the second one and then um I know it was like a hard one but what did I write down for the because I there was a lot man you know obviously everybody has their movies mm-hmm. but um what did I have written down? I don't remember but oh so, well movies right movies. Mm. Oh, and then the last uh, Avengers Endgame. Okay. I thought the, the fighting at the end. Yeah. That yeah. was great. <laughs> I think I fell asleep for a little bit of it. Um, but then my girlfriend woke me up and was like, yo, this isn't cool. Just quit snoring. Oh. <laughs> but it's not because of the movie. It just happens. Like, every time I go to a movie theater, I normally fall asleep. <laughs> and then uh, I now remember when my last movie, I guess, that Nacho Libre. Okay, with uh, uh, Jack Black. Yeah, man. It's classic. You know, if you know me, I don't cry in movies, even if it's like really sad. You cry. Yeah, I don't cry. I don't cry. But that movie is the only movie <laughs> that makes me cry. You cried? Yeah. I can't think of a scene. You know, the the scene that I'm, I'm referring to, so when Nacho's in the final fight with the gold dude, mm-hmm. right? When... Uh, when that music starts playing and he's like pinned down or something and then the nun and then the kids start showing up and then like he turns that direction oh, you know what I'm saying yeah. Like, yeah yeah and then that was like okay it's it's over and then you're like, like you're like this is it for me yeah <laughs> so like I you know you know what's gonna happen and it was just a beautiful scene and I, I, I started crying I, I was like like okay and then he does the eagle uh, finishing move remember yeah, that was that was that, that's why that movie is is really cool, man. I, re- I really love that movie. 
Hopefully they do a number two. But, but yeah, it was it's really been a fun. while. It's been, I think it came out in like what, 2005? Yeah, I don't, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember. Give me your top three either albums, artists, songs, or a combination. Like one, 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 whichever. So number one. You said you like classic rock. Yeah. Number one, I think, because it's my first favorite album, mm-hmm. would be uh, 50 Cent's, um, what's the album called? Where In the Club came out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't think. Uh, it's not Get Rich or Die Trying. It's not Get Rich or Die Trying. What was that one? one? Because my brother, he, he uh, listened to that song a lot. So man, I don't know what that song. That was one of the favorite, like first songs I can remember. I was just jamming, jamming to, to it. Yeah. So when they went to the Super Bowl, that was cool too. Oh yeah. Yeah. So yeah, and then um, watch the throne. Like Kanye classic. And yeah, it's classic. You know every song, beginning to end. I remember. I still it. listen to it now. Exactly. I still do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I remember they came out junior year of high school, I believe. Because I remember I would always listen to it before a game and get me up. You know. get, get pumped. Yeah, get pumped, right? So that one. Um, and then, like, Michael Jackson. I think those three. Because Michael Jackson is another guy that had a huge impact in my life. Hit after hit. Oh, yeah, man. Like, the way he dressed, the way he moved. Like, he was one of a kind. Yeah. One of a kind. Yeah. Rest what are you uh, binge watching on right now? If you are. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm, I'm watching uh, Better Call Saul. Okay, I've never heard of it. It's, uh, you know, Breaking Bad? Yeah. yeah. So, it's like a spinoff of that. Oh, okay. Uh, he's a lawyer. You remember the lawyer in Breaking Bad? No? So, yeah. I tried watching it, but I didn't beginning to end. Just a couple episodes. Well, I don't know why I didn't get into it. Everybody enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that like my dad was getting like he didn't get into it, but mm-hmm. everyone has their own taste. Right? Yeah, but yeah, I, I watched that. I've been watching a lot of those Disney ones, those Star Wars stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I just got done watching um, the Book of Fett. Book of Fett? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Book of Fett was dope. Uh, some scenes are a little cheesy and awkward, weird, but it's Disney. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm mean, excited for the Obi Wan Kenobi one though. Oh, yeah? Because that dude, man, I guess my idol, bro. Yeah. Especially that actor. Because I like I said, that's my generation. Mm-hmm. What's his name? Ewan McGregor or something like that? I can't think of his name. Uh, he's also in um, like the Taken movies, no? No, I think you're getting uh, two guys. I know what you're talking about. Uh, Neil Nielsen. Oh, right, uh, right, right, Two right, different right, right. guys. Sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. But yeah, that guy, his show's coming up, and that's something I'm looking forward to. It's exciting. It's exciting. Let's talk about the uh, group stage real quick. We've got a few minutes left of your time. Let's get your picks for the group stage. And uh, maybe we could do the podcast again once the group stage have been settled. And mm-hmm. then we can pick our quarterfinals, semifinals, and our eventual World Cup champion. Um, so for group A, we have Qatar. Ecuador, Senegal, and Netherlands. Who's making it out of the group? You know, the thing with Ecuador, man, I was a little upset. I'm like, why did they make it and not Colombia? It's <laughs> shocking to me Colombia didn't make it. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I, I believe Netherlands and Senegal. In that order? Canada. Yeah. Uh, Qatar, ooh, I have no idea how... You don't hear anything about those guys, right? If they're good, who they got, you know. <laughs> I'm gonna go with Netherlands, Senegal as well. And and I want to mention that I'm not a fan of uh, the World Cup being there. I really don't. In Qatar? Yeah, I don't. Why? I don't understand. You know, it was during uh, Seth Blatter his time mm-hmm. as a president, the corrupt. Yeah, so I believe president. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So I believe that you know money had something to do with yeah. that because. Because I remember, if I remember correctly, in 94, in order for USA to host it, they needed to have a league. Mm-hmm. And I think the MLS was founded around that time. Oh, okay. I think it was, I'm not too sure. Obviously, I was born in 94, so I wasn't 
But yeah, I remember little things like in the news, and I think that it was like you can only have it if you have a league. Like, cause there was the MLS. I don't think it existed. No, I don't remember when it was founded. Either ninety four, ninety six, or around there. Yeah, cause they they still had the strange ass penalty shootout too. Oh yeah, they, the Drew. <laughs> oh my god, I can talk about the MLS for hours. I really don't like it. But it's, it sounded like it just from your voice. You were like, oh. Like, let's just not talk about it. Um, group B is still undecided, but to me, it's going to be England and USA. I really don't like USA. I really don't like U.S. soccer in general, but I hope it's England and Iran. <laughs> but no, I, USA, I mean, we're still waiting on the fourth team. But I mean... Do you want to leave your blank with England for sure? Yeah, I'm going to leave it back because I... USA, man, I, I don't I have to give to, them credit. I have to uh, give credit to USA for their improvement and uh, how, long, how how far they've come mm-hmm. from starting in 93, 94 to, to where they're at now. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is, it is a whole other subject, yeah. Tavi, we can discuss another time. We'll go with C. Okay. This one here. Argentina, Saudi Arabia, Mexico, Poland. Do you want me to give you mine? Yeah, you can go first. Yeah. I'm going to go with Argentina, Poland. Mexico will not make it out of the group stage. Mexico does not have a person to put the ball behind the net. And in order to win games, you have to put the ball behind the net. Totally agree. Yeah. Who do you have? So, you know, this one's tough for me because there's three really good teams. But Saudi Arabia, I mean, people don't know it, but I feel like they're they're a good team. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think any of those teams is going to blow them out. Like, you're going to be like 1-0, 2-0 games. Like, Saudi Arabia is like, they're a little quiet team. Like, obviously, they don't have, like, great, great players, but they're not easy team to beat. Um, but in my opinion, I mean, I'm, <clears throat> I think that, Mexico should advance at second place. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing that is really has a really big weight on on, on me, like is the, the thing with Messi. Mm-hmm. He hasn't scored many goals. He is assisting, mm-hmm. but what I'm scared of is usually from what I've witnessed in World Cups prior, players do really good if they're doing good at that moment. Like every player has like their consistency. Mm-hmm. Like if they're not good before mm-hmm. they go to the World Cup, they're not going to be good. In like the, the momentum of going into the World Cup has to be coming from them playing with their club. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like that has a lot to do with how good you do in the World Because there's some people who don't like do that good in World Cups. Like mm-hmm. we got to keep in mind that um, I think El Fenomeno. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. Not El Fenomeno. Pele. Uh, Maradona. Uh, they they do good, really good. But then there's some other really good players that in the World Cups. They, they don't show. Up. They don't they don't really show up. Like 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 Cristiano Ronaldo. I mean, he hasn't really done much in World Cups. If it weren't for Messi's 2014 World Cup, he hasn't really done yeah. much. You yeah. know. Um, um, who else? Who else? It was just in my head. I forgot the name. But yeah, those are those are good points. And like, so that's what I'm saying. Like, you know. And Messi's the goal. Mesh Rodriguez had a different effect. Oh, he so. was unbelievable with <laughs> Colombia, but then he started playing club. It may have also been because he wasn't given the 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 right opportunity. Who knows? But I definitely get what you mean by certain players who are one of a kind players, world class players. They go into a World Cup and it's a totally different situation because now you're playing with your countrymen. You're no mm-hmm. longer playing with, you know, someone from England, someone from Spain, someone from France, and like the best of the best exactly. from those countries. But and then but but for this group though, like I feel like Poland, I wouldn't be surprised if Poland does make it over Mexico because if Mexico lost, what they couldn't be USA the last three times? That's a and big it's zero to zero in the Azteca. Yeah. And, you know, I want Chicharito to be up there, but I feel like Chicharito's all-time leading goal scorer of all time. I feel like 
he has so much experience that you need to call have him. him on the team. Call him. Like, why is Henry Martin there? Why? Why? <laughs> There's a lot of players. Yeah. So we've got Argentina, number one? Or Yeah, I have Argentina number one because okay. um, yeah, I can't ignore the fact that they are undefeated for a very long time. Mm-hmm. They haven't lost a game in a long, long time. And they are the defending Copa America champions. And then well, what the thing with, with Poland is Mexico did beat them, what was that, four years ago? It was yeah. like a, I think it was... It was like an exhibition or it was around the lap time of last World Cup. I think it was before the World Cup. And Mexico beat them. Um, but this year, is, it's always different, right? Uh, or every World Cup is always different. But I think that on paper, Mexico has a very good team. Yeah. So you're going to go with Mexico? Yeah, I'm going to go with Mexico. I think that come World Cup time, they'll... Uh, you believe Mexico has it together? <sighs> <laughs> I'm not a fan of the coach, but I think so. <laughs> We've got another uh, two group stages coming up that are only three. Um, group D. You know, um, you know how every champion, World Cup champion, mm-hmm. the next World Cup, they do terrible. Mm-hmm. That's so what's going to happen. I don't think it'll happen this time. I oh, think, okay. I don't think uh, Mbappe. They're going to break the curse. Yeah, I think Mbappe is too good. Mm-hmm. He's also one of those players who's, who's playing well mm-hmm. going into the World Cup. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, I have a lot of respect for Mbappe. But, you know, he's him. also going into the transfer market, which yeah. means he's going to want to play well to get the best of the best offers, although he already has <laughs> millions of dollars on the table. But, and, but, but yeah, I have a France. Going number one? Uh, yeah. Same. Um, and that second one, I mean, I would like to see the fourth team, but that mark is good. But, you know, one of the best players is who knows if he's going to be 100 percent. Christensen? Is, yeah, Erickson. Mm-hmm. Uh, or Erickson. He did. He did snap on Chelsea the other day, but, you know. And he had a goal for Denmark uh, mm-hmm. last time he played for their international team a couple of weeks back. So he, he's a big, big part in that team success. And then Tunisia will. I know some players, but it's nothing to powerhouse yeah yeah so we'll both I mean, go we'll Denmark just, yeah I know Costa Rica is waiting to be in there I think Costa Rica will, will qualify um, but they won't really uh, they oh won't. is that going to be one of the playoff spots there yeah I know that one of the playoffs will be uh, Costa Rica versus New Zealand I believe um, we'll have to stay in tune to uh, fill out those I think it was like what three Three, three mm-hmm. stages that only have three teams so far. Still have to figure out the the fourth team, which is another one here. Oh, this is going to be the group of death, maybe, given who who's the the fourth team, because you can't ignore Japan. Oh yeah, can't ignore Japan because they. I mean, Japan beat Mexico in the Olympics not too long ago. So and Germany hasn't been very convincing as a as an international team as of recently. Mm-hmm. But I would still have to go with Spain one, Germany two. Not knowing obviously the the fourth team. You? Yeah. Like one thing I do want to mention: I don't think neither of these teams are going to win the World Cup. Maybe Germany, but I doubt it. Mm-hmm. But I don't uh, think either of them will win either. I think that Spain—they're not scary no more. Like if you think of the the, the teams they the players they had in twenty ten. To today, yeah. it's like, I'll give you an example. Like, no offense to him, he's a good player, but if you have, uh, what's his name? The guy from Villarreal, he was in my head right now. Or if you if you had like Dani Parejo, let's say, because mm-hmm. he's been playing a little bit, or Asensio, mm-hmm. are you going to be, you know, super scared? Not compared to like a David Silva. <laughs> or yeah, like a, uh, Iniesta or yeah. Xavi in their primes Gerard Moreno that's the guy I'm thinking about so he's probably mm-hmm. like one of their strikers I mean not that scary yeah. nothing midfield? like a David Villa yeah uh-huh. nothing like a David Villa oh, the, guy was an animal uh, I think he's their record holder for most goals oh is he for Spain yeah uh-huh. overall 
Yeah, yeah, a lot of people know that. Yeah, I believe that WV is number one. Very quiet, right? Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, man. And like, he still came to the MLS and killed it for a couple of years, too. Yeah, he did. <laughs> so, and then what you got, Koke, you got. Koke. It's like they're good players, yeah, but. Koke has been consistent forever. He's just had to be behind players like Iniesta and Xavi in the midfield. Yeah. And uh, he's more of like a, like a holder. Mm-hmm. Um, but. Even then, he, it's been a stacked midfield for many years. He had to wait to his turn. Happy to see him playing the minutes he deserves to play. But it's right. He's not in his, He's yeah. not ex Chavi. He's not Busquets. Yeah. He's old, but he's good. He's just old. Because if you remember Spain in 20... When, when they went in 2010, right? Mm-hmm. 2014, they were terrible. They didn't even make the, the, the knockout the, no, stage. No, they didn't. Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of things that... That I believe Spain's That's what makes scary. the World Cup so fun. Yeah. Who do you have? But I, I think I have Germany one, and um, I'll say Spain two. Because uh, yeah. And then we have Belgium, Canada, Morocco, Croatia. You go first. <laughs> I'm gonna go Belgium, Canada. Yeah. Wow. I think uh, Canada deserves kudos for how their international team has uh, been playing as a recent. And over the past 10, 5 years, they've definitely made noise. Like they were a team that Mexico could go and beat 3 0, 4 0 very, very decisively. Mm-hmm. It's not the same way now. It is not the same way now. They've got players playing in Europe. They've got players playing in their domestic league. Canada's a, Canada's a good team to me. I think they're going to, I think they're going to go uh, Belgium one, Canada two. Croatia being that they were the runners up of the World Cup just four years ago. I don't think they have enough youth. Uh, coming up and the players that they do have like uh, uh, Modric and Rakitic are older and I don't believe they're going to be able to give you the minutes that they gave you in the 2018 World Cup it was like they were almost they were almost playing the whole game (laughs) no yeah yeah. well for me I I think that Canada would be last in that game I I think that a lot of those players don't have experience. Mm. Uh, obviously, the only one big standout player is obviously Davy. Davies, yeah. And then they got some other guys like um, that play in in Leo. One guy plays in Leo, and one other guy plays in Turkey. But other than that, it's like they need they need more. Yeah, it's been a long time since Canada been in the World Cup. Mm-hmm. But obviously, Belgium's number one. Um, you know, I think with Belgium is, yeah, they're ranked number one, I believe, in the world right now. But they haven't done anything. Yeah. You know, I think that this World Cup is going to be the last World Cup you'll see that Belgium be good in a long time. Really? Because they had this generation where they were really yes. good players. And Hazard was one of them, but he is nowhere to be found right now. Yeah, Hazard, Lukaku, Kevin De Bruyne. Mm-hmm. And they're, I think they're like dirty. 31, around there, mm-hmm. around that age, coming four years from now. It's like, yeah. I'm pretty sure Hazard is going to be done by then. Yeah. Lukaku, well, Lukaku is Lukaku. He's not the most consistent. Um, De Bruyne is clearly their best player. Their defense is like weird, but 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 right now, <laughs> Belgium is, is very, has some very good players. Um, and then I have Croatia second because Luka Modric is still very good. Uh, they still have some very experienced players, um, and they're still playing at a high level. So I, I have to give my respects to Croatia. Um, they are, they are. They just recently tied one on one, and they've been playing really well leading up to the qualifiers and the exhibitions. And and you know one thing that I never forget about is how eight years ago, Mexico, like I know Croatia. 
¿verdad? Four years later, Croatia makes it to the final. It shows the development. Shows the yeah. development. Our development in Mexico is stagnant. It's just, and it, and it stays there. It's frustrating. Yeah, but that's something I'll never forget. and don't understand the logic there. Because eight years ago, Croatia had pretty much the same players mm -hmm. as they had four years ago. Mm -hmm. So And Mexico beat them convincingly. Yeah. And four years later, they're in the the finals <laughs> of the World Cup. <laughs> we've got two more groups, and we've got to hurry because I've already taken more time than you were going to give me. <laughs> no, you good, you good. Um, We've got Brazil, Serbia, Switzerland, Cameroon. This is a tricky one. I mean, personally, I'd say Brazil is going to go number one, but then the other three is kind of left in the air for me. Yeah, like, if, if you gave me a top three, who was going to win it? In my opinion, Brazil, uh, Argentina, and uh, France. Those so you definitely opinion. have Brazil going number one here? Yeah, I think Brazil has um, just consistency for the last, you know, two, three years right mm -hmm. now. They've been on fire, right? They, they've been really good, and they still have very good players. They're not as scary as other World Cups, but they're still one of the best in the world. You don't want to play them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> if exactly. you can avoid them, yeah. it's better. Um, but who you got for two? I'm going to go with Switzerland. I'm going to go with Switzerland. Although it's not going to be easy. Who do you have? So I want to just say a little quick, cool story. Mm -hmm. uh, Serbia back in um, 2014 they uh, cool story they, they went to the Alamo in Aurora the Serbian international yeah, team yeah I don't know who they played but I know they played in Chicago I, it was not advertised or anything but I have a picture of Ivanovic uh, you know Markovic like some pretty good players in that picture and um, at the time I'm like Oh, wow. What are they doing here? Are they, you guys getting ready for the World Cup? That's what I asked them. But they didn't make the World Cup. So, you like, bogus. <laughs> so, so, you know what's funny? is there's a, there's a picture with me and them. Uh -huh. They're all smiling. And then I tell them that after that picture. And I think somebody else takes a picture. And they're all like, man. Did yeah. you know? I, I didn't know. I thought they did make the World Cup. <laughs> yeah, that's funny, right? But it's so funny. You can see my picture. They're all smiling. <laughs> And then the, the other picture, they're like, man, you know, like, damn, this guy just brought up that we're not in the World Cup. <laughs> so that was my bad. But but, but right now, Serbia is, is good, man. You're going to have them make it through the group stage to make up for your... <laughs> no, I don't, I, don't, I don't have them down. I think that Cameron will, will take that. An African team. Yeah, I think that, man, you know, when, when I was, I, I forgot to mention him, but one of my favorite players is... Uh, Didi, no, Didi. Samoleto. Yeah, Samoleto is good, but but as far as African, like my favorite player all time was Drogba. Didi Drogba. Yeah, he. That's why I love Chelsea. He was a, yeah. pretty much the the main yeah. reason why. I have a lot of respect for those African teams. Like they they play with passion. Like they, like they. There there isn't a give up. Uh huh. It's ninety minutes of grind. Yeah. Grind. So I think that would be great. I think that they, they should make that. I think Switzerland, their era is over. I think like in 2014, they were really good. And then they, their best player, in my opinion, well, maybe he's not their best player no more, but he plays for the Chicago Fire now. <laughs> uh, so that's Shaquille. a huge, yeah. So that's a huge dip in competition. So <laughs> I don't think he'll do anything. <laughs> in the World Cup. <laughs> We've got the final group. Uh, Portugal, Ghana, Uruguay, Korea Republic. You I'll, let you, I'll let you go okay. first. So I think Portugal uh, will go first. Um, just because, you know, it's not just Ronaldo, but they have good players. Yeah. Uh, Bernardo Silva. Uh, they have some very good I have players. I Portugal going number one, too. Number two, though. I have I have Uruguay at last place. Uh, I think that Uruguay is lucky to even be there. I don't think they're that good no more. Okay. I like Luis Suarez, Cavani. They're all old. Yeah. You know when they were really good. What? 2010? Yeah. 
They have some good players. Luis Suarez was still young. He wasn't what he is now, but had, now all of those guys. They had defense. Guys. They had offense. Mm-hmm. They had, uh, uh, didn't they have uh, Forlan? Yeah, Forlan. Oof. Kadak. But, but yeah, so. Godin. Godin, yeah. Like all those names, they're all old now. I'm so. still gonna put them to yeah. make it. I'm still gonna put them to make it through. Though Son plays for Career Republic, right? I believe so. Yeah. I apologize. Mm-hmm. I apologize to him. Amazing, awesome player. I don't believe they're gonna get past the group stage. No. I'm gonna go Uruguay. Yeah, I have. I have. Uh, I have. Uh, I've got. I've got you, you know that four years ago. Uh, when Mexico, they got North South Korea. Mm-hmm. You remember that story we saw? Um, about him having to advance yes. in order to not have to do military time. Yeah, uh-huh. mm-hmm. that's crazy, right? Mm-hmm. But he don't got to worry about them no more. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's yeah, <laughs> yeah. That is crazy. But I have Ghana second. I think that Ghana has a very good team. I mean, they got money. They got uh, they got other players playing in big teams. Mm-hmm. I I think I've gone Ghana at second. I wouldn't be surprised if they're first. Okay. Yeah, because I mean Portugal is good, but um, back when they won the European mm-hmm. Championship, is they're a little older now. Yeah. Ronaldo's obviously you know really old player now. Yeah. But I think that Ghana has a good, solid team. So we've got our group stages picked. We'll see how accurate we are. We have similar picks here and there, but. There are some differences, so it's going to be fun to see uh, how many we got right and wrong. <laughs> um, really quick, want to ask you, um, who would you like to have a one-on-one conversation, alive or dead? So it can be somebody alive or dead. I know that one one was uh, Maradona. I feel like, I mean, I wasn't the biggest fan of him, but he just had so much passion, yeah. man. And I bet he's got some crazy stories oh, too. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> so him and and then um, just to talk about soccer. I feel like he's one of those guys. If you ask him one question, he'll go and answer it and it takes like an hour. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I would like that. And and all the hour is going to be worth. It. Yeah. And then uh, I guess the other one would be like my my grandpa's. Uh, they they passed away, but but like I felt like I wasn't I wasn't able to get to know them that much. Mm-hmm. So I, I mean, they're like my Colombian grandpa. I didn't get to meet him that much, but I mean, I feel like because I was named after him. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so I kind of oh, wow. would like to have uh, talked to him a little bit more. Mm-hmm. So yeah, those are the people I would like to have talked to. Nice, nice. Anything you'd like to share with the people? Um, where can we find the M cream? Yeah. So yeah, in, in, we have Instagram, we have a website on our website. If you're interested in knowing the locations here in Illinois, our website is, uh, is there for, for you guys to see. And what's the website again? Uh, it's M cream edibles. Edibles.com. And if you want to edibles.com. Exactly. Yeah. And if you want to like, you know, just go straight to the location, just slash location. Okay. Uh, Perfect. In our Instagram, we we mention um, our locations as well. Uh, we will be posting soon our locations in California if we have our California viewers. But, um, but yeah, and then um, and then I also would like to say that you know um, at Wobanzi, come come out and support us. Uh, donate if you like, but support the Chiefs. Yeah, like my my biggest thing is uh, um, you know right now we're recruiting, and I want to be able to recruit. Uh, all the local players, because, you know, the way I see it, I went to Wes, Obanzi came to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, that means a lot for somebody like that. What I went through, like never played club, never this and that. I feel like if you, I mean, just recruiting that player means a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's, that's something that, you know. Yeah, and you have the ability to do it now because, you know, it's uh, uh, funny how, what was it, maybe, Three, four, five months ago, uh, we went to our uh, alumni school to watch a soccer game. And then you spoke to the coach, uh, if he could give, uh, or if he'd give you a minute, 
to speak to the players and it must have been like a surreal yeah. moment where yeah. you're on the field that you used to play ball at and now you have the opportunity to give uh, uh, these kids uh, a continuance in the career of, of soccer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, that is true. Yeah, I, now that I think about it, I'm like that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it, it's. I thought about. It, I was like, oh, it's dope. It's dope how Alvaro once played here, and I was, yeah, speak to the coach about having a minute to speak to the guys on having an opportunity to continue their soccer career. Yeah, and then and, and time flies, right? Time flies. Yeah. We look great. Mm-hmm. We look great, but time flies. <laughs> yeah. Well, congratulations on your marriage. Um, oh, yeah. All the best of luck to you on your soccer coaching career. Thank you so much for doing it. Uh, I've got to have you again. It was a pleasure, bro. It was a pleasure. No, man. I appreciate it, man. Anytime uh, talking about anything like this, man, is awesome, bro. I appreciate it. We out. Sweet.